So far, we have been doing two stage detection systems. Now we are going beyond two stages and we are going towards multiple stages. And let's see what happens. It should at least give you higher mean average precision, better performance. It might end up being slower. But if your only goal is to come up with an algorithm that is really performant in terms of mean average precision, then you can do this multiple times, have multiple stages. This is faster our CNN. An image goes in, you do some convolutional operations, which are shared between two of your heads. The region proposal network is going to propose objects or object locations to the fast RCNN to consume. So it's going to have a fully connected head of, head of its own, and then it's going to do some classification and bounding box regression. And your region proposal network, this C0, is only asking this question, is there an object here or no? We don't care. Is the object a dock? We don't care about the fine grain details of the objects. You just care about there's an object, yes or no. And these boxes are going to be general purpose. You take those boxes, and then you're going to have a classification head. This one is fine grained. This one could have 20 classes or 80 classes, depending on your data, or even more. And then you're adjusting the bounding boxes. And then on top of this, there's going to be a non maximum operation, a post processing step. So 8.0 is your proposal network. It's going to produce object proposals. H1 is the region of interest subnetwork, which is just a fully connected network, or we can actually remove the fully connected and go fully convolutional with, com with the type of convolutions that are sensitive to location. We saw these ideas. The C is the classification head, and B is the bounding box regression head. What does a bounding box regression do? You have a candidate, it is proposed to you. So the region proposal network, what are the candidates for it? Those are those anchor boxes, which are densely spread over your image. So there is always some candidate bounding box and the candidate box for the, pro the region of interest detection network, your fast RCNN, is actually coming out of the proposals of the region proposal head. So you have a candidate bounding box. It has four coordinates, the center and its height and width. Uh, you have a ground truth target bounding box, and you want to adjust B towards G, the ground truth. You're going to have a regressor head, which is this arrow here, or this other arrow here. You have your training examples, which are now pairs of uh, candidate boxes and the ground truth. And then you're going to write down a L1 loss function which is going to be robust to outliers. But then if you do it this way, your ground truth and the predictions coming out of your neural network are actually not normalized. They could be as big as they want or as small as they want. And we don't like that. Actually, neural networks don't like that. They're not going to converge. How do you encourage uh, better convergence? You're just going to try to adjust the box towards this ground truth. The only thing that's unknown is these deltas which are the adjustments of the center relative to the height of the ground truth, relative to the width of the ground truth. And then there's going to be some deltas in the form of the ratio of these two, the width of your ground truth and the width of your box, the proposal or the candidate. So it's enough to solve for these deltas. And then as soon as you know these deltas, you're going to be able to back calculate the boxes the coordinates of these boxes. You're going to be able to back calculate the X, B, Y, B, W, and B, H, okay? Or adjust them accordingly towards the ground truth. And usually, even this one is not enough normalizing, you're just going to have another round of normalization. These are the details that people don't tell you, but they, they are going to end up being crucial. You're just going to divide by the mean and the variance of this actual data, because this is going to be your data. These deltas are your data. Given a pair of G and B, you're going to be able to compute deltas. And then your neural network is going to output deltas. And then you're going to have a regressor loss between the two. What is the idea here? How are you going to go beyond faster RCNN? This is an idea. There are some proposals coming out of the region proposal network. There is going to be some adjusted boxes coming out of your fast RCNN head. Use those as proposals or as candidate for another round of fast RCNN. So this is the idea. There is B0, 
B1, we can take it, have another head here, or these heads could share parameters. Then you're gonna have iterative bounding box at inference. So there is no training going on here. This is all happening at inference. And there is actually a paper before this one doing that, doing justice. But here is an idea. What if we can change these heads? They don't have to share parameters. And then it's gonna enable you to increase your detection quality. You're gonna have your classifier. So each one of these are gonna be classifiers. And then there is some regression, which is what we just did. Its loss is what we just showed. So let's focus on the classification part. It's gonna take a, an image patch within that box, and then it has to classify it into one of M plus one classes. M is the number of classes in total. For instance, in Pascal VLC, it's gonna be 20. And then there's also the ground, the background class. What are your training data for this classification head? It's gonna be a cross entropy loss. We just need to know what is our data. You have a box or you have a patch, and then you're gonna look at that patch and the ground truth. You're gonna set a threshold. If there is enough intersection between the patch and the ground truth box, you're gonna associate a label for that box to this uh, X. So that's how you're setting Y arms. And what is your threshold? It could be 0 0.5, for instance. And then GU, I don't want you to confuse the notation here. This GU is an identity of its own. It's the corresponding class labor, one hot vector for the class of that ground truth bounding box. So don't confuse it with this index here. That one is counting your data. This one is just an identity of its own. So you look at the intersection over union of the patch and the ground truth. If there is enough in overlap between the two, then you're gonna say my ground truth data label is whatever the box is telling me, whatever the ground truth is telling me. And then there's actually another word prior to this one saying that you can play around with this U. This U is a hyperparameter your algorithm is gonna be sensitive to the choice of U, the threshold. What if you take a family of U's, not only 0 0.5, but also 0 0.55 and 0 0.75 and add them up together. Then you're gonna be able to increase your detection quality. At the same time, this is giving you more data to work with. More boxes are gonna be identified as having that particular class. So that's one idea. And then you can play around with these heads, as I promised. They don't have to be the same and share parameters. And you don't have to do this bounding box iterative fashion with heads that share parameters. They could have different heads. And then now you need to do some training. But then these boxes are coming out of only your proposal network. What if you combine these two ideas together? This iterative bounding box idea and this classification type of idea with the integral loss. And then that's gonna give you the cascade RCM. You have different heads, they don't share parameters, they don't have to. And then each uh, bounding box regression head is gonna propose bounding boxes for the next head to consume. There's gonna be a cascade of regressors. There's gonna be a T, total number of stages. This one has two stage, three stage, four stages. You're gonna have a classification loss, which is gonna be like this. And then you're gonna have a localization loss or bounding box regression loss. But then the bounding boxes are gonna come out of these proposals from the previous stage using your regressor network, or you can have different regressors networks. And from one stage to the next one, you're being a little bit more strict. You are first relaxed, even if there is not enough overlap between the box and a ground truth, you're gonna label it to have the label of the ground truth box, but then you can become more and more strict as you move along from one stage to the next one. And then this is gonna give you a multi-stage object detection system. It's gonna end up being slower and faster or CNN, but perhaps it's not the slowness is acceptable given how much performance you want to get out of your system. Any questions about this? Was everything clear? Okay, perfect. I guess with that, we can close the chapter of multi-stage detectors and move into single-stage detectors.